We recall that government rejected a number of recommendations of the Moshot Commission report on the Ayahuasca West war gone by election violence. But now let's focus our attention on those that talk on Brian Echampong. And under individual liabilities, the commission recommended that Mr. Brian Echampong be reprimanded for his ultimate responsibility as a uh, in authorizing an operation of that character on a day of an election in a built-up area. Government, however, rejected the recommendations of the report on the basis of factual inaccuracy. The government stated that the said minister is a minister of state at the office of the president who has been directed to work at the Ministry of National Security and assist the minister for national security in the performance of his duties. So, Brian Echampon, uh, the recommendation by the short commission on him was one that was rejected by government. Alfred? Aisha, thank you. you. Recall there was that concern about who reports to who when Brian Echampon was at, at the National Security Ministry. Well, this time around, we understand he directly responds or reports to Ambrose Derry, who is the substantive minister in that ministry. Now, Adip Sani is a security analyst. He's been monitoring this particular development and the ramifications thereof. Adip, thank you for time uh, this evening. Do you share in the views and fears of the NDC in any way about this new development? Um, Alfred, to some extent. However, um, there seem not to be the existence of any evidence that points to a grand scheme by the government to use Brian Echampon to, you know, as it were, rig the election or do anything untoward come uh, uh, December this year. Indeed, uh, what we should rather be worried about is the fact that um, this is a gentleman who has uh, metamorphosed into a terminator of some sort. He has lost um, some degree of legitimacy see in the eyes of not just the NDC, but a lot of Ghanaians. I have studied extensively about the security arrangement of many countries and how successful it has been in some countries, especially in Scandinavia. And one of the secrets is when security agencies and agents are accountable to the people. However, in this part of the world, we rather have the security agencies being accountable to the political elite, and that is not that is what is not actually helping. The fact that he's been specially mentioned in the ML Shot Commission and he's been, it, 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 it's been recommended that he be reprimanded and no action has been taken whatsoever points to the fact that a lot of Ghanaians feel that they are staying, their opinions doesn't really matter and it creates a further discord, a further disconnect between the civilian population and the security agencies. So this has a direct bearing. This aside, we also have an issue with the fact that our security hierarchy is so convoluted, it's so bridled in confusion and diffusion to the extent that you have a single job performed by like three or four people. And it's usually a recipe for disaster. I speak also as a conflict mediation specialist. Right. And I do understand that sometimes when there's overlapping authority uh, in a particular work environment, it breeds conflict, it breeds okay. inefficiency and ineffectiveness. Dazani, thank you for this elaborate analysis. I'm grateful for time this evening. Adip Sani, the security analyst, joining us via Skype.